All right, friends, this is Senior Pastor Michael Whitlock with the Nazarene Ministry, and I was just confirming from the Father God Almighty that the Holy Spirit is with me and will be speaking through me in this broadcast. What are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking about the prosperity of you, me, and our country. And where's it all come from? It comes from the mighty Elohim. That means God Almighty, the Mighty One. Now, you may call him God, Jehovah, Jireh. Actually, in the ancient, ancient Paleo Hebrew, he is, and I'm going to use the pronunciation, Yahovah, Yura. Now, he is our provider, El Hai Shaddai. He provides for us. Abraham called him El Hai Shaddai. What's it going to take for all of this to turn around? Now, it is still in the AM. This is the Nazarene ministry. I am the ordained senior pastor of this ministry. And we're going to talk very quickly about prosperity. But we're going to talk about prosperity of first spirit. We have to attune ourselves with the Father God Almighty with prayer. His Son takes us to the Father. Where do we know this? John 14, 6. I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So we pray in the blood and name, his ancient name prophesied by Isaiah, Emmanuel in English, in the old language, El Manuel. Then in modern day times, the churches began to call him Jesus Christ, Christ from the Latin and Greek, which means anointed one. Let's not get hung up over names. Our Lord and Savior knows who you're praying to. Think about that deeply. He truly knows who you're praying to. So when I call out in the Hebrew name, Yahushua Messiah, he knows who I'm praying to. If I call out in the name of Jesus Christ Nazarene, he knows who I'm praying to. So let's not get hung up on that. Let's end this separatism, divisionalism that is hurting America and is hurting all believers in the true Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Am I Trinitarian? No, I'm not. Is the word Trinity in the Holy Scriptures? No, it's not. But our sacred Savior, the Messiah, said, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Isn't that interesting? But the Father God is one. How is that possible? I've said it before. God became a man. This is the prophecy of El Manuel. Emmanuel. That gives us the understanding that the person we call Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ the Nazarene, is God on earth. He is divine. Now, he commanded us to come together. This is very critical in prayer, where two or more are gathered in my name and agree, there will I be. Come together in agreement, there will I be. So this is why I as a minister want unification of all denominations, unification of all non-denominational ministries, unification of all Jewish believers in Messiah, all unification of Messianic believers who might be Christians who are following in the footsteps of the ancient Hebrew way, all of us coming together in prayer, all of us, what happens now? With that unification and our voices coming together in agreement, Messiah is there praying with us, anointing that prayer, and presenting it before the Father because the Scriptures tell us He forever makes intercession for us who believe in Him. Now, all of this extreme weather, the extreme snow, 
that the Father God's voice told me to tell you and warn you repentance and revival has to happen in America. Extreme weather ends. Flooding ends. In the last few days, we've had the extreme snows hit and the flooding. The Father God Almighty used me to warn you. And then the Father told me that enough repentance has not happened in America. So he's going to keep bringing extreme natural disasters and disasters. Look in Ohio. Train derailment. Toxic Toxic pollution all over the place. Now people are concerned about their water, the air, the ground, everything. All of this can end. Who's in control of everything? The Father God Almighty makes it very clear. I'm in control of it all. All we have to do is come together in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for an incredible breakout of repentance and revival in the United States of America and Israel. And Father, it has begun. One of the universities on the East Coast has begun to break out in repentance and revival. Also, the Catholic Church is in the midst of Lent preparing for these holy times, the coming of Passover. Father, hear our prayers. There are people who are fasting. They are praying. Hear our prayers. Be, be absolute peace to America, Father. Please hold back your wrath. Show your mercy and favor and grace to us. Hear the prayers of all of us who are in the blood of our sacred Savior. Please stop the natural disasters and accidents and disasters that are polluting America or anywhere else on the earth, especially Israel. Father, bring peace in America. End war for us, Father. Bring peace. Billions, Father. Help us to bring billions in prayer to you so that we can enjoy prosperity spiritually, soulfully, mentally, physically, and financially and have absolute peace, happiness, prosperity, abundance in all that we do. Amen. If you said amen to that prayer, we agree like our Messiah wants us to, like Jesus Christ the Nazarene wants us to. And because doing that, coming in prayer in agreement, his blood is on that prayer. His breath is on that prayer. What did he do in the book of John? He said, I want you to come together in agreement. I want you to love each other as I have loved you. Then he breathed on them. Bless them. Put hands on all of them. Like in the book of James, it says very clearly, if you need healing, come to the elders of church and let them anoint you and lay hands on you and you will be healed. What is the anointing? The oil represents the presence and the substance, the actual physical substance of the Holy Spirit. Friends, you need prayer, call 702-588-9237. Call. We recently had a call from, I believe it was Florida, and I prayed for a mother and a daughter. And what a great experience we both, the three of us, had in prayer they agreed with me. They said, Amen. And I guarantee, not because I'm anything special, I'm just a man. But I guarantee that our Messiah was in that prayer. We, play, we prayed in the blood of our Messiah. We prayed in his name. 
We came in agreement. We said amen together. They agreed with me. I agreed with them for everything they need and want and desire. Their prayers will be answered. I guarantee it. Messiah did not lie. He is not a man that he can lie or a young man that he can change his mind. Where do I get that? The five books of the Torah. Because God became a man to walk among us. And God promised us in the Torah that he is not a man that he can lie. And he is not a young man that he can change his mind. Our Messiah was the very God on earth that spoke to Moses and said, write these books down. I told you over and over again. The key that opens the door to all the scriptures is the Torah. Why? Because Messiah is the living, breathing, walking Torah. Yes. The word became flesh. So that means from Genesis to Revelation, the word became flesh. The Father God Almighty spoke to the body of the Messiah, who is God in bodily form, man, and told him to tell Yohanan in the old language, John the Revelator, to write Revelation. When we begin to understand these keys to the scriptures, now all the mysteries are answered. And who told us this? Messiah told us, who is God on earth, that all would be revealed to those who believe, who pray, who study. Matthew 7, 7, 8. Ask, you shall receive. Seek, you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. But doors, you knock on, and doors are sometimes locked. How do we open the door? With keys. So what did our master say? Our master said very, key, very clearly, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Loose and bind. Now I tell people all the time, resist because the law, and the Messiah was the walking, breathing, talking law, says when I resist all evil, it must flee. And you've got to remind evil of that because all of us can be under any kind of an eagle uh, attack, an evil attack. We can be under that. All right. Now, how do we break it? We resist it. We rebuke it. That means it must stop. We bind it from us permanently. Don't forget to say permanently, because if you only bind, if I bind in the holy word of God, Messiah says, bind the strong man. You can't take from the strong man what he has stolen from us unless you bind him. Demons, devils, unclean spirits, everything Satan commands comes to kill, steal, destroy, to steal it from us. They have stolen from us. Now, binding them, they can eventually escape. Is that correct? Yes. But bind somebody with ropes, if they keep working those ropes and working those ropes, they'll eventually loosen up and they will escape. But if I bind them permanently, this is why the Holy Scriptures say that by Michael, Michael used unbreakable chains to bind Satan into hell. Chains, not rope. Hell is a place of burning, so fire could burn away rope. But chains, okay? So we must handcuff the strong men, Satan, demons, devils, unclean spirits, wickedness and rulers of dark places we must handcuff them we must chain them permanently and by doing so they're cast back to hell permanently they can't bother you anymore now that doesn't mean that satan will not send more 
demons and devils to attack us. Okay? So we have to constantly be in this battle until the Messiah comes and gives us absolute victory. So we have to use binding. Now, loosing, what's that mean? I can loose from the throne of heaven blessings through prayer, proclamation, declaration, proclaiming blessings for this ministry, for me, for you. And it even becomes stronger when we come together in prayer and agree and do it together. Now we got calls coming in from all over the United This one's from North Carolina. Can you believe it? But I'm going to get back to that after this video. And I'm the one that will return that call, senior pastor. So listen to me. We are in a battle, and we can win this battle. We truly and absolutely can win this battle. And we can stop natural disasters. We can stop wars and bring an end to all of this and have absolute peace, prosperity, abundance, health, no disease in America and Israel, or any other country we're praying for. I get calls from Pakistan. I get calls from uh, Africa, different parts of Africa, the French settlements especially. I get calls from all over. And when we come together in prayer, now we have the power and authority Matthew 10, 1 through 8, read it for yourself, where the Messiah himself says, we can pray and heal every disease, all bodily weakness, healing. We can do this, prosperity. Now, Father God Almighty has asked me to talk to you real quickly about Philippians. Paul wrote a lot of incredible material inspired by the Holy Spirit all right now when you call most prayer lines and you ask to be prayed for they're going to quote this verse to you but what I have found and I'm not jumping on any ministry we need to come together and be unified I love all ministry non-denominational denominational Churches, I don't, I, I am not going to speak negatively about any ministry out there or any minister. It's not my job. It is my job to pray for them. And that's what I'm going to do. That's what a true minister and loving person of our Messiah would do. What did Messiah say? He said, love each other as I have loved you. And I'm talking about ministers. Why? Because who did he say that to? He said it to his top ones from the ancient language. His emissaries translated from the Hebrew into English. From the Greek and Latin apostles. So now he calls them his friends. And he calls them his apostles from the Greek. And he says, love each other as I have loved you. So what's my job? Love every ministry that's up. They believe in him, I love them. And I want them to love me. Now, give and it will be given unto you. So if I give them love, they're gonna give me love. It's real simple. That's what our Messiah taught us. And it's a great wisdom, all right? Now, also about loose, real quickly. You can also loose evil from you and then bind it permanently. Always remember permanently. Now, if I call out to the throne of heaven and I say, Father, I resist, rebuke, and bind all evil from me permanently, 
loose your holiness, righteousness, your set apart, holy and sacred spirit to speak through me and guide me and be my life so that I can be the walking, talking, breathing edification of the holy Messiah on earth. Following the Messiah, I'm not the Messiah, I'm just a man. But following the Messiah, speaking what he would speak through me, as he will speak through you, and all you got to do is open yourself up to the Messiah. And you, he said, command it. This is a command. Follow me. That wasn't a choice. Well, if you believe in me, follow me. If you have the time, follow me. No, follow me. So in following him, we are constantly exposed to him, and we learn to, as Paul said, be imitators of our Christ, okay, or be like him. Now, they always quote this verse, and it's great, and I'm glad they do, but they kind of make a mistake and forget to tell you, what is this chapter about, chapter 4 of Philippians? What's it about? Paul was in a situation where he really needed help. Now, Paul was not a lazy man, and he wasn't afraid to work. So this is why I've told you many times, when the work is available and I need money, personally need money, I've gone out and worked as a security guard. So you all know that, or you should know that, or all of you new people who are just getting to know me, I have worked part-time as a security guard. Sometimes part-time was, I always work, I try to always work third shift or second shift. That way I can sleep and during the day I can do ministry full-time. Now, long story short, so like Paul, Paul made tents. What tents are we talking about? His father owned a tent business that made tents for the Roman soldiers for Rome. Also, Paul was skilled in the making of prayer tents called talits. He knew how to make those. And so sometimes he worked and made money. But then sometimes there was no work for him to do or he was in a part of that area that he was trying to share the word of the Messiah with people. So he wasn't able to do what he normally did. So he called upon fellow believers who sent him money to help him. It's right in the, uh, the verse prior to the one everybody usually reads when you call for prosperity prayer. Indeed, I have all and more than enough. I have been filled, having received from Ephroditus in the ancient language. What you sent, sweet-smelling fragrance and acceptable offering, well-pleasing to Elohim. Now, here's the void, uh, verses that they always read to you when, you when you pray for prosperity. You call prayer lines, and they will pray this over you. And it's good that they do. It's great. But they don't explain so that you understand how this happens. You must give, and it will be given to you. God says we must tithe and offer. Was our Messiah, Jesus Christ the Nazarene, a tither and an offerer? Absolutely. Every true Sabbath, he's in synagogue, and as they walked in, they would have jars. Okay? One was for the temple. One was for widows and orphans. One was for the poor. And as they walked by these, some had three, some had four. And as they walked by these, uh, one of the jars sometimes was for the sick and uh, people uh, who had ailments and were unable to work. So they would drop donations into these jars. Modern day churches pass a plate, a basket, or ask you to send donations. 
Anyway, it goes on to read, and it says, And my Elohim shall fill all your need according to his riches in esteem by Messiah Yeshua. Of course, this is from the Hebrew. Your uh, translation would say Jesus Christ. And to our Elohim, which means God Almighty, your scriptures would probably say God or God Almighty, okay? And to our Elohim and the Father be esteemed forever and ever. Amen. Meaning glory to the Father God Almighty. Um, amen and amen forever. All right. Now, greet every set apart, meaning holy, one in Messiah, Yeshua, the brothers with me greet you. All the set apart ones greet you, but most of those of Caesar's household, the favor of our Messiah, Yeshua Messiah, be with you all. Amen. Now, so it's important. It's a tough situation to pull one verse from Scripture and really understand what's going on. You need to read before and after so you really get from that scripture, that one scripture, its exact meaning. Now, understanding this situation, why do I bring this up? People call me and the uh, lady and uh, her mother, who I prayed for, they need prosperity. So we come together agreement in prayer in the blood and name of our Messiah. But we all must give. I must give. I give into Beth Nazarene, which is this ministry, and that's what I'm supposed to do. My tithe should go into the ministry and or church, okay, that I serve. And all of us serve, whether you go to the Church of God, you go to a Baptist church, whatever church you go to, we all serve that church. We must tithe. We must offer into those ministries. Sometimes God will inspire you through the Holy Spirit, and he's done that with me many, 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 many times with many different ministries. Uh, and, and tells me, I want you to send them $20, $60, $5, a dollar, $2, $3. He, he'll many times tell me the amount. Sometimes it, he'll, his spirit will come upon me and I'll just know what I'm supposed to do. The point is we must give and then it's given up to us. That is the reciprocal law of God. We must love, and love will be given to us. If I'm a hater, eventually hate's going to be given to me. Stop hate. I resist rebuke and bind resentment, hate, and anger from me permanently. And you'll see a change in yourself like you've never seen before. Now let's quickly turn to Matthew 6. The Father uh, had told me at the beginning, just before coming to you via this video, to read to you from Matthew 6. All right, I'm there. Now, I want to look at a verse, and I made a note here which verse that we wanted to start with. I want to look at chapter 6, verse 16. And all of those verses following are awesome. So let's look at 16. And verse 16 starts and it says, When you fast, do not be sad face like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces so that they appear to be fasting to men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward. Now, I'm going to stop right there very quickly because, now, 
This has to do with fasting. It has to do with prayer. It has to do with your spiritual life. Your, God wants a very individual, and I use the word original, relationship and a very private relationship with each and every one of you. With me, everyone. And this is why our bedrooms now become our prayer chapels, sanctuaries, if you will where we pray privately to the Father, God, His Son, and Holy Spirit and reap the rewards from the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit as we pray very privately. Now, it's the same thing with fasting. When we fast, we must appear to not be fasting, to be happy. You know, sadly enough, I was watching a movie, Hollywood, Thank God Almighty that they've made efforts to try to make movies about our Savior and uh, Moses, etc. The tough part in watching some, not all, but some of these movies is sometimes Hollywood has to interweave. Movie makers have to, uh, and it's not just Hollywood. Movie makers have to interweave these different formulas that they think that will uh, cause you and me to be interested in watching this movie. I think true believers like myself, we want to see movies that are accurate from the scriptures. So that brings me to the point that a lot of these movies are not as accurate as they should be. They show, and I can think of this one particular movie. They show our Messiah in a very sad way. And this would not be. This would not be. There's one time in the scriptures that we know our Messiah shed tears looking on the side of a hill toward Jerusalem, and he cried out. That Jerusalem had killed prophets, stoned them, and it, he was very sad then. But our Messiah would not tell us to anoint ourselves, take, bathe ourselves, dress well when we're fasting and not have done that himself. The interpretive emotional thing that movie makers try to do, uh, they've tried to, uh, for example, in the crucifixion and the beatings prior to that, I've seen movies, and you've seen them too, where Messiah cries out, makes all kinds of noises, and so on. I was asked years ago by new flock members who are still flock members, do I literally believe in the Word of God? And I answered them without, quickly and without question, yes, absolutely. One, it's a book of history. And two, Anything that I do not know at this time that is or isn't history, I believe the scriptures. The scriptures say that he was led to the slaughter like a lamb and made no sound. That's, I'm paraphrasing, but that is what it means. He made no sound. So, this interpretive, emotional outburst and all these different things, no. Now, I don't think that our Lord and Savior was laughing on his way through Calvary to the hill of Golgotha. I, I, I don't see that either. But like a quiet lamb who's led to the slaughter, he didn't make a sound. So when he was being nailed to the cross, he didn't make a sound. That's it. 
And then on the cross, he prayed. So, there, this whole weeping and yelling and screaming and all this other stuff. Someday, I pray that there are movie makers that would join with me and other ministries that come together to finally, truly make movies that are historical. And then I believe all of us will be greatly benefited. The, the problem that we most generally see is that Hollywood and movie makers, as I said, they believe in a formula. And you'll see it in the movies. You know it? Any of you who have watched movies, you know what I'm talking about. And they have to incorporate these formulas so that they have their sales hit what they need to hit to be able to keep making movies. That's the sad truth of it. Now, we go on, and we're only going to hit a couple more verses here. Now, it says... But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. So that's the other thing. When we want prosperity, reward. Yes, pray together and agree. One, two, pray privately and secretly, and then know this verse. Father, you have asked us to pray secretly to you, and you will openly reward us. So, Father, from Matthew 6, I ask you, I need your help financially I need your reward Father please hear my prayer in the blood and name of the Holy Messiah Jesus Christ the Nazarene Amen now I've given you two keys two important keys to prayer Power for prosperity. Spiritually, soulfully, mentally, physically, financially. And we're going to cover more in other ministerial videos. Remember, we are the Nazarene Ministry. I am your senior pastor. And whether you're a member of our flock over video, or you're a member of our flock over phone, which thank God they're calling. Whether you're a member of our flock, uh, actually coming to us here in Vegas and doing Bible study prayer meetings and communion service, be a member of this Nazarene ministry. Now, you can be a member and a supporter of this ministry by sending $1 per month. For many of you out there, that is definitely not a tithe. It would be an offering. $1 per month. Now, we're old school. We don't do PayPal. We tried that. It didn't work. We had more problems with it than you can imagine. We had hackers' problems and all kinds of things. So we're not going to do that. We're old school. Either send your checks and money orders to us. And we've even had people send us cash in the mail. I don't recommend that, but we have had that done. But my point is this. We're old school. Send your support to the Nazarene ministry. Just put on the check. Nazarene ministry. That's all you got to do. One dollar a month. 30, 20, 
North Yeoman, spelled Y-E-O-M-A-N, circle, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89128. And with that said, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I truly come to you in the blood and name, and you have told me to raise my hands to those who will raise their hands with me to you and we come together in prayer and agree as our messiah has asked us to do commanded us to do sacred and holy messiah in your blood and name emmanuel jesus christ the nazarene i ask you to prosper all who will agree in prayer and say amen to this prayer Prosper them spiritually, soulfully, mentally, physically, financially. Prosper them with wisdom, understanding, and revelation of the sacred scriptures. Supernatural divine knowledge of the scriptures and all supportive material. Send them peace, health, sacred one. And end all bodily weakness in them and their family members and children and grandchildren. I pray this in your sacred blood. Amen. Amen. Till we meet again, happy trails to you. This is the senior pastor, ordained minister for the Nazarene ministry. You know, our tax deductible. And we would love you to become members so we can share these scriptures to you. Explain and answer your questions about scriptures so that biblical ignorance can end in America. And the prosperity and all wealth, health, success, abundance, and massive peace spread throughout the United States and from the United States to all other tribes and nations. Amen.